In this third quick start tutorial for V-Ray Next for 3ds Max, we will cover how to set up, light, and render an interior scene. We'll start with a daylight setup, and then in the second part, we'll cover how to switch to a nighttime lighting scenario. Here I have opened up a scene called Interior Lighting Day Start, which you can download from the link in the description of this video. Note that I'm using 3ds Max 2019, but the assets are also compatible with earlier versions of 3ds Max. The scene is currently lit by a V-Ray Sun and Sky that I created in advance. If you're unfamiliar with this setup, you can check out the introduction tutorial video of this series. Okay, to begin, let's set the scene up for interactive rendering so we can get quick feedback as we make changes to the scene. In the Render Setup window, you will see that the V-Ray Next CPU renderer is selected and the camera that we will render from is locked. This will allow us to work in the perspective viewport to make changes to the scene while rendering from the camera's perspective simultaneously. We're also set up on the default progressive rendering mode so we can get a preview of the image as it renders. The only thing I'm going to change is the render time limit. I'm going to set this to zero so that the render will not be limited by time. Next, let's head to the global switches rollout and enable the override material option. This will apply an override material to the scene geometry so I can better see what's going on with the lighting. I'm going to specify a generic gray V-Ray material from the material editor that I created in advance by simply linking the material to the None button here as an instance. Also, let's click Exclude to exclude objects with glass materials from the override, so that way I'll still get light inside the house through the windows. All the windows and other glass elements are attached to the house glass object here in the list, so just add it to the exclusion list and make sure that the mode is set to exclude up top. Also, let's add the V-Ray Denoiser render element. And for the denoising engine, let's choose the NVIDIA AI Denoiser. As discussed in the previous tutorials, this denoiser is perfect for look dev purposes as it gives us a very fast denoised image. Lastly, let's double check our output resolution is set to a width of 960 pixels and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so we get a faster preview. Okay, let's go ahead and start the interactive render to see what our scene looks like so far. You'll see there's light coming in, but it's obviously not enough as the render looks underexposed. Also, you may notice that there is some kind of warmish tint to the image, which we would not expect to see in a standard daytime scenario. We can always fix this by manually tweaking the V-Ray Physical Camera's aperture, color, and exposure parameters, but I'll show you a faster and easier way to do this. In the Render Setup, under the V-Ray tab, scroll down and expand the camera rollout, and let's turn on the Auto Exposure setting. Now, the appropriate exposure will be automatically handled by V-Ray. Alright, that looks much better. Now we have properly exposed the environment, and at the same time, gained a much better contrast inside. We can also enable the auto white balance setting, which will remove some of the warmish tint we're seeing in the scene here, and get the proper color balance for our image. You can see now we're getting a much whiter and more neutral color tone, representing the gray override material we applied, which is exactly what I want. Next, to make the contrast inside even better for our image, let's test some different positions with the sun. I'll select it in the perspective viewport, and let's try to find a better light direction. Okay, I like how the shadows look here, so now let's make them more pleasant and less sharp by increasing the size of the sun. Let's try a size multiplier of 4. That's much better. Now, we can further improve our lighting by using direct lighting instead of environment lighting. Let's stop the IPR for a second, and here, in the V-Ray toolbar on the left, let's select the V-Ray dome light icon, then click somewhere in the perspective viewport to create a dome light. Wherever you choose to place it is not important. In V-Ray Next, we've implemented a new adaptive sampling checkbox that makes the dome light smarter. It automatically analyzes the scene to determine which parts of the environment to sample and which ones to ignore. This makes setting up interior scenes much easier, since in most cases, you will no longer need to manually set up light portals to get a good result. In addition, the adaptive dome light can render up to seven times faster than the non-adaptive dome light, depending on the scene. Okay, 
Let's first rename the new light to V-Ray Light Dome. Then, hitting the 8 key on my keyboard will bring up the Environment and Effects window where the environment sky is located. Let's right-click on the V-Ray Sky Environment map, then copy and paste it as an instance into the texture slot of the dome light. Now, our V-Ray Sky is mapped into the dome light and will be used for lighting the scene, automatically taking advantage of the dome light's adaptive algorithm for even faster results. Now let's close the Environment and Effects window and start an interactive render again. OK, we're all set with our daylight setup, so let's proceed to do a final render of the scene with all of the materials. In the V-Ray tab, let's first turn off the override material. Then, in the Progressive Image Sampler rollout, I'll increase the noise threshold a bit to something like 0 0.01. This parameter determines the desired noise level in the image, and since we'll use the denoiser, we can set a higher noise level to make the render faster. Next, here in the Render Elements tab, let's switch from the NVIDIA AI denoiser to the default V-Ray denoiser, which is recommended for production rendering as it gives consistent results. I'll leave it to the default preset, which I think will work fine for our scene. Lastly, let's set the output resolution width to 1400 pixels, and when you're ready, press Render. As you can see, we already have a pretty clean image. One advantage of progressive rendering is that we could choose to stop the render now, or whenever we're happy with the result. In this case, however, I'm going to speed up the video here and leave it to reach the noise threshold that I've set. OK, our daytime render is complete. Let's see how we can improve it a bit by making some basic color corrections right here in the V-Ray frame buffer. Simply click on the Show Corrections control icon at the bottom left here to bring the menu up, and then click on the Exposure tab to expand the exposure controls. Let's check the box to enable them and play with the values here. Just be careful not to overdo it, or you'll lose the exposure and contrast in the raw render and risk making the image appear flat. I'm also going to play with the saturation a bit, but you should feel free to explore the rest of the tabs to see how they affect the image and find a look that suits your preference. Lastly, let's load in a LUT file or lookup table file, which is used for color grading. These files let you save and load in predefined color values. Make sure to check the LUT option on, and then let's uncheck Convert to Log Space, since the LUT file I'm going to use is meant to work in linear color space. Then, let's load in the file called interiorlightingday.cube, which you'll find in the Assets folder of this project. Since the LUT is not prepared specifically for this image, the effect is too strong, so let's bring the weight value down a bit until the image appears pleasant. Something around 0.2 works pretty nicely for my taste. When you're happy with the result, don't forget to check the Save in Image option to apply the changes from the LUT when we go to save the image. In V-Ray Next, we also have the ability to save the color corrections we make here in a special file for later use. Simply click the Globals button and press Save to type a name for the color corrections file and save the corrections. Okay. Now let's save our final image with all the corrections we've made to our hard drive. Click on the Save Current Channel icon in the center of the frame buffer, type a name for your image, and select the file type that you want to use. I'm going to choose PNG, and then I'll click Save with the default PNG configuration. Next, let's explore a different method for lighting our scenes, known as image space lighting. This method uses HDR images for casting light in the scene which if you saw from the Lesson 2 Quick Start videos in this series, HDRIs allow you to easily emulate a natural light atmosphere. To start, let's close the color corrections in the V-Ray frame buffer, and then in the render settings, let's lower the output size to 960 by 540 for a faster preview. Back in the V-Ray tab, let's also re-enable the override material to focus strictly on the lighting again. I'll also switch our denoiser back to the NVIDIA AI denoiser. Next, let's select the V-Ray Sun and disable it. Now select the dome light again and open the Material Editor to create the HDRI node that we'll use with the dome light. Right-click on Empty Space and go to Maps, V-Ray, and select V-Ray HDRI. Let's rename the node appropriately and then load in an HDRI called 02 Dry Field. HDR images are very useful because they capture a greater range of luminosity than a traditional photograph, and when used with the V-Ray dome light, 
They are placed in a hemispherical or spherical shape around our scene, casting light that can easily be tweaked by rotating their position. In this case, let's change the mapping type to spherical since our HDR image is a spherical panorama. Let's then link it as an instance to the dome texture slot, replacing the V-Ray sky map, which we no longer need. Now, our dome light will cast light using all the colors and intensity of the HDR image we loaded in. Okay, let's move the material editor over to the right and bring up the V-Ray frame buffer here again. Let's resize it to have a clearer view of the material editor and then start an interactive render. All right, I'm liking how that looks already. Now you can see how easy it is to change the overall mood of the image just by loading in an HDRI into the dome light. You can also change the mood by adjusting the rotation of the HDRI using the horizontal rotation parameter. Let's try a couple of random rotations. Okay, now, let me show you another method of tweaking the dome light's rotation that allows you to work in the viewport. I'll stop the IPR for a second, and let's reset the horizontal rotation to zero. We don't need the material editor for this, so let's close it and head to the dome light. In the dome light rollout, we can check the lock texture to icon option. This will link the actual HDRI rotation to the dome icon here in the viewport. Now, we can use the 3ds Max rotate tool pressing E to test out different light directions in the same manner as changing the horizontal rotation. Let's start the IPR and then try out a couple of rotations here in the perspective viewport. Okay, I'm happy with this position, so let's stop the IPR and proceed to set up our final render settings. I'm going to set the resolution width to 1400 again, and then in the V-Ray tab, turn off the override material so our materials are enabled. Down below, let's switch from rendering with the progressive image sampler to bucket rendering. Here in the bucket image sampler settings, I'll leave everything by default, as these settings should work pretty well for most situations. Then, let's switch to the default V-Ray denoiser once again. When you're ready, go ahead and press render. All right, that's looking great. I'm also really enjoying the sun hotspots here. Now I'd like to show you how to load in some pre-made color corrections. Let's open the corrections control panel again, and from the globals button, select load. Now, browse to the assets folder, and open the Interior Lighting Day CC02 file, which I've prepared in advance. This is the same V-Ray file type for global color corrections that we saved earlier on. And that's it. The color corrections are applied, and you've now seen how to both save and load in color corrections from the VFB. Now you can feel free to tweak them further if you'd like. Lastly, let's explore how we can save our images and then later load them into the V-Ray frame buffer and make different color corrections to them. First, I'll uncheck all the corrections I've made so far so that I only have the raw data in the image as V-Ray rendered it. Next, click on the save icon, type in a name for the render, for example, Interior Lighting Day 02, and then let's select the VR image format as our file type. The VR image file type is a special format used by the VFB to save images in full floating point format with all available render elements. Now, our render will be saved with the V-Ray data from the VFB so we can load it in again in the VFB later for tweaking. Note that if you save the VR image file with color corrections applied, they will be embedded into the file as part of the image. To demonstrate, I'll load in a render that I've made with another HDRI, which you can find in the asset folder called 03 Spruit Sunrise.hdr. This was saved with color corrections enabled, so further tweaking will happen on top of the ones already embedded in the image. All right. Now let's move on to part two of our interior lighting tutorial, where we will explore how to set up a nighttime interior lighting scenario. In addition, we'll touch on the updated V-Ray lens effects. I'll see you in the next lesson.